going to show you how to assemble IKEA Hauga wardrobe with the sliding doors, two doors in this case, two hanging rails and two shelves. So let's do it. And you're getting three boxes with this wardrobe and useful tools, small electric screwdriver and a bigger one. This is a smaller one, just electric screwdriver, bigger one combination with the drill with adjustable torque. If you like to see what I'm using, you can find the links in the description. Getting three boxes, as I mentioned, with this IKEA Hauga wardrobe. So, we're gonna open them up for you to see how much stuff you're getting. Just gonna open that quickly. Manual instructions you're not gonna need if you're gonna follow this video here. Box with the screws and brackets. So, you're getting two bags itemized one and two, and third one without the number. That's the brackets for the wall fixing. We're gonna get to it as we go. We're gonna open bag number one first. I like to organize everything that is in the bag. I have better idea what I'm working with as I'm going. I'm gonna do less mistake this way. And this is all what you're getting in the bag number one. You're gonna start with those two small identical panels. Here you're gonna have those two holes on each where the lock's gonna go. And on the side you're gonna have those four holes where the wooden plugs gonna go. You're gonna need four wooden plugs and place them in in those four holes so two for each panel place them in in the right holes you see where's the bigger hole on the side that's not the hole where to put those wooden plugs so it's the other two holes so place them in the right place and now we're gonna mirror the panels so the holes on the sides are on the top now so you have two on each panel. So that's where the lock's gonna go. Position everything exactly as I have it here. So you're gonna have easier time. One side of the long panel, which is gonna be on the middle, is colored. One side is plain. So this is gonna be face down. So the color side is at the bottom now and the plain side with the holes is on the top. Now we're gonna take the first panel so one side is colored, it's gonna go at the bottom as the wardrobe is face down and the back side is a plane. And we join together those two panels just with the wooden plugs. Just place it in the side panel to the middle panel. Now we're gonna have those, let's call them screws, we're gonna have two parts. One is longer, one is shorter. On the middle is kind of dividing a washer, which is not gonna let you go deeper. So the longer part's coming in and the shorter part is sticking out here. We're gonna do exactly the same with the other one. You see it's coming nicely into the hole there. If you go with the shorter side, you're not gonna be able to go all the way to the hole. So exactly the same, the longer part coming in and shorter part is sticking out from this side. That's how we're connecting those two panels. So that's the middle panel. Now we're gonna have, need four locks and two of them is gonna go first in this connection here. So place the lock in. Don't forget to point the arrow on the lock to the screw, which we put it previously. Push it in and exactly the same at the bottom arrow on the lock pointing to the screw. You put it the other way around, you're not going to be able to lock the connection. Arrow pointing to the screw, which we put it previously. Now we secure the connection by twisting the lock to the right side. First and second one exactly the same. Twist the lock to the right side secure the connection. Shorter part of the screw sticking out from this side. And now we're gonna place this one holes up again and we can place the locks in. Arrow on the lock gonna point to the front hole. Place it in and push it down. You see the arrow on the, on the lock pointing to the front hole where the screw is gonna be. It's gonna apply for all these locks, so it's always pointing to the screw. Plain side on one side and colored side at the bottom, as this wardrobe facing down. And we place the panel in, tap it in completely so there is no gap. Once you're in, you can secure the connection by twisting the lock to the right side. Top and bottom one. That's how it's gonna look from the top. Now we're gonna have two of these panels, they're similar, but they are different here. On the top, you're gonna have six holes here, and this is gonna be the bottom panel. Second panel's exactly the same size-wise. All the holes, apart from those six holes, there's no six holes here. You get just two kind of holes, but it's not all the way in on one side, one on the other side. So just two holes. Unmarked back, 
then you're gonna have L brackets, wall plugs, and the screws, washers, everything what you need to secure this wall drip to the wall. Put those brackets even if you're not securing this wall drip to the wall. So later on, if you decide it, you have them there. So washer and a small screw securing the L bracket to the top panel from the top side. So you're not gonna really see it when you're gonna look from the front. Exactly the same on the other side, L bracket coming right on the top of the hole, screw, small one with the washer, securing the L bracket on the top part of the wood. This is the bottom side of the top panel and we're gonna put this one first in. So from this side there is no holes, from the other side you have three big holes on the middle. Those big holes on the middle, they have a bigger opening on one side, as you're gonna see here. So we're gonna place the middle panel into those bigger opening in the holes. You're gonna lift the middle part up and try to put those three plastics in a bigger opening of the hole. So each hole have kind of long opening and on the top is a bigger opening. You need to get there in all three of those uh, plaques. Place it in. Now we're gonna stick out from the top like that. Make sure at this point there is no gap and you just can push this panel down and it's gonna secure the connection. You're in the right place if you don't have any gaps and the uh, dividing panel and top panel lining up nicely. We're gonna do exactly the same with the bottom panel, that's the panel with the six holes and the three big holes on this side and two lines for the rails. So this is the bottom panel. You can place it down. You can see I have very limited space here and you can walk around it. And exactly the same, we lift the middle part up, get all those three plaques in the bigger openings in the hole. You're gonna stick out and once you're in, there's no gap, you can push this panel down. Make sure the panels are without the gap before you're pushing this down, otherwise you're not gonna be able to lock this properly. So that's how it looks, all the middle with the dividing panels, no gaps, and they're lining up nicely on the edges. That's important because when you're gonna put the back panel, there cannot be any gaps. So make sure you do this right. Now we can do the side panels. You're gonna have two side panels and exactly the same, you're gonna face down so the color part's coming down on the carpet and the plain side is on the top. Here we're gonna need those three holes here, three holes here and three holes at the bottom. You're gonna have to hit them at the same time. First we're gonna go with the, all three plastics on the top and each hole have a bigger opening on the top. So get there with the, all three plastics and all six plastics at the bottom top first and then the bottom. You can do the other way around, it's all good as long as you thin. The key is get into bigger opening and close the gap completely. Once the gap is closed, then you can push it down. So you see here, bigger opening coming in, you know, all three of them at the same time and all three of them at the same time here. Do the, those six holes at the same time because they're close to each other. No gap between the panels and then you can push it down. See, when it opens, just go back, close it again, and then when it closed completely, no gap between the panels, then push it down. Don't do it earlier. If you have a gap, connection is going to be kind of open. The correct position, the dividing gaps, lining up nicely with the gap on the edge of the side panel. Exactly the same on the top, push it down, the gaps are lining up nicely with the gap on the side panel. And we can place the second side panel. This curved side going down, as we have this wardrobe well face down, plain side on the top. Let's do the top first, bigger opening in, close it completely. You see I just push it slightly, not all the way in, before I connect those, so it's not gonna pop out, but it's not all the way in. Now I can do the bottom, exactly the same, all six holes at the same time coming in and closing them together. Once you don't have any gaps, you're gonna be way up on the gap on the edge where the back panel is gonna go, but then we're gonna push it down once we, once we don't have any gaps here. So as you see, I just tap it in, reduce the gap to zero, and now I can push it. I secure the connection by pushing the dividing panels down completely. One, just like that, exactly the same on the middle. Push it down and same on the top. So that's the right position. They're lining up nicely with the gap and not gonna have problem with the when we're gonna put the back panel. Make sure you push all this all the way down, just like that. So it's lining up nicely. Here is the back panel. So if you did all the previous steps correctly, you're not gonna have problem. You're gonna have two lines at the bottom with the holes and one on the top and one on the middle. So the colored side's gonna be inner side and the plain side's gonna be outer side or at the back. 
you see I don't have any space here so I gonna improvise here otherwise I would just nicely slide this in if I have enough space behind the photo but there is basically zero space here so I'm just gonna put first side in it's a bit wobbly because this panel is very slim so watch out don't bend it too hard because you can break it easily this panel I'm gonna slide it on the one side first slide it in completely at the bottom and all the way up and now I'm gonna push it here on this side by lifting it down the middle and kind of find the gap on the other side exactly the same here you see it's a bit wobbly because it's very soft easily to break I cannot get in there I'm just gonna use whatever I have around me this is just a hanging reel I'm gonna push the middle into the gap just like that you see it's popping out there on the middle so I just push it from under and it's jump nicely in so once you in you're all good without any much pressure on the edges as I mentioned we don't want to break this and just push it up now to lift it up so basically the holes on the back panel are gonna line up nicely with the holes in the in the wardrobe frame but at this point you see there's a bigger gap here on this side so I'm just gonna have to put the wardrobe in the right position which it means 90 degrees on each corner of the wardrobe how we're gonna achieve that is very simple you can just line up the holes and measure from corner to corner you're gonna get the exactly the same number once you get exactly the same number you in the right position which means each corner of the wardrobe gonna be in a 90 degrees and now we're gonna have four different type of plastics which they're gonna secure the back panel with the main frame of the wardrobe and we're gonna use first this one and that's gonna go along to the side panels place them in just make sure they're all the way in just the head sticking out as this plastic gonna have two different parts the second one gonna secure the plastic in place so for now just place it in into the right side panel then left side panel at this point the wardrobe is in a right position as I mentioned I measure from corner to corner do this everybody uh, avoiding these steps but then I see so many comments my, my doors uh, uh, cannot be adjusted this and that so that's how you avoid this problem so this is the plastics for the middle they're gonna have two parts each of these plastics on the side they have two parts and here it's gonna be two parts so put those all the way in at this point you have the wardrobe in the right position so you don't need to be worried just don't move the wardrobe at, uh, at the moment it should hold nicely now when you put those uh, plastics in but still just watch out for now once you secure the second part of the plastic that's the wardrobe is going to be secured and hold in place completely this is the second part of the first type of plastic we're gonna just place it in so that's gonna secure the connection on the edges or on the sides on the left and the right sometimes they go quite hard but you see I can do this here by hand not need hammer or anything and here we have the second part of this type of plastic which is gonna be top one line bottom two lines and on the middle one line so just secure this part as well by putting them in you see they go nice and easy if you have a little bit of problem use the hammer if you have a rubber hammer it's better if not just use whatever you have but they go nicely with the just by, uh, with the finger so this is a slightly different system than the usual old IKEA system which you just uh, bang the nails in so this is kind of the latest adventure from IKEA now we're gonna have those two panels with those two holes that they on one side one hole on each on the other side you're gonna need wooden plugs and we're gonna place them in the in those three holes on each of these panels so there is three holes on a, one side and the other side have uh, two holes on the middle and one hole on each side so we put the wooden plugs where is the three holes on the each side of these slim panels not where is the four holes so this is gonna be the bottom panel which is gonna go under the bottom and just place them in this way just tap them in nothing holding on the sides just like that one the back one and exactly the same we're gonna do for the front one they are colored from the both sides you don't need to be worried about that just place them in and we're gonna secure them on the side with the legs it is gonna be two type of legs four of them kind of t-shaped and two of them just straight so we're gonna start with a t-shaped leg and they're gonna go in the corners so they're gonna secure the side panel with the slim dividing panel on the middle just like that see no hammer needed here exactly the same at the bottom on the middle is the straight one just place it in this is a good thing if you have a, a wooden floor so you're not gonna scratch your floor so not gonna be wood on wood and on the other side exactly the same you're gonna have two another two of the t-shaped 
leg is kind of securing the the panel with the middle as well and it's a leg for the quadruple. The L brackets are adjustable so depend on your skirting board later on you can adjust this L shaped bracket how far you want it uh, so that's depend how thick is your skirting board you're gonna have washer and the long screw and the wall plug included in the back and that's how it's gonna work when you're gonna fix the water to the wall wall plug to the wall washer and a long screw through the brackets to the wall plug which is on the wall here i'm just demonstrating how it's gonna work when you're gonna do it when you're gonna attach the water to the wall now we're gonna have this long panel with the two gaps one on each side plain on one side colored on the other side color side on the top and color side on the inner side four wooden plugs and they're coming on the side here right on the top of the dividing panel next to the L bracket and this is how it's gonna work you just slide it in between those wooden plugs when you're gonna put this panel in that's how it's gonna hold in place and kind of covering the ugly L bracket there as well so another two on the other side and just slide this panel in so the color side is on the top and on the inner side and plain side is at the bottom back side of this panel so you're not gonna see it when you're gonna look from the front just tap it in right on those wooden plugs which we just placed in and it's kind of covering the ugly L bracket which is there to fix the wardrobe to the wall when you're gonna fix the wardrobe to the wall just remove the uh, panel out fix the wardrobe to the wall and put the panel in again that's how it looks at the end see the bracket sticking out and it's adjustable now we can lift the wardrobe up two people probably suggested here you can do it alone it's not that heavy yet as we don't have the doors on put it in the right place where you want to have the wardrobe and now we can place the rails for the doors so you have one u-shape and one kind of w-shape so you have two of them are u-shaped and two of them kind of w-shape we're gonna start with the w-shaped rails is two of them and those gonna go at the bottom the key here is start right on the edge so you're not gonna be short on the other side or too long on the other side and then just push it in you don't need hammer for this it's go nice and easy just with the fingers just make sure this w shape rail is completely in no any humps there so the door's gonna run nicely so you see we start right on the edge on one side and we have nice the ending on the edge on the other side exactly the same for the second one start right on the edge so you're gonna have you're gonna be good on the other side as well when you're gonna be finishing push it down completely no bubbles here so it's gonna be nice and smooth right for the doors at the bottom a nice ending right on the edge that's how they look both of them so two w ones at the bottom and two u-shaped on the top and the same rule apply start right on the edge here you see i said start right on the edge and i didn't here so it's hard to take them out and you don't want to take them out because you don't want to rip the color out i just move them like that slide them out and now i'm gonna push it completely into the side so i'm gonna be fine at the end on the edge it's kind of hard to remove them because it's kind of ripping everything out once you need to remove them so make sure you do this first time exactly the same second u-shaped coming in all the way to the edge go slowly see that's how it's supposed to look like and nice ending on the other side right on the edge no problems now we're gonna have those for the hanging rail four of these four screws put the screw through the hanging rail part place it in there's two holes one for the screw at the bottom and secure the screw in it's gonna be four of them two on each compartment of this wardrobe place the hanging rails just push them down one side and exactly the same on the other side they just click in now we're gonna have bag number two open it up and that's all you're getting in here so that's gonna be the hinges for the bottom and the top and those small kind of rubber plaques just place them in there's gonna be two on the top and two on the bottom exactly the same on the other side two on the top and two on the bottom this is prevent the doors against slamming as there's not any self closing now we're gonna do the door hinges here you're gonna have the hole for the door handles so leave them on the outer side exactly the same as i have it here so you see the hole on the side this is the top hinge you're gonna have four of these the second part of the hinge that's the plastic plaque and we can place them in in the top part 
and four holes. So four holes on the outer side. We don't need the second part of the hinge. That's the plastic plug. So two of them securing each hinge. That's how you unlock and lock the hinge by pressing it and pushing down, unlock it and pushing it up, lock it in place. I'm going to explain that once I'm going to put the doors for now, put them down so the hinge is unlocked so you can place the doors into the rails. Exactly the same for all four of them, so two for each doors. So this is the left side which have only two holes on the side and two holes on the inner side of the doors. Coming in, two plugs securing the hinge. Each hinge secured with the two plugs. Four holes on the outer side and two holes on the inner side of the doors. Here you see four holes on the outer side. Here exactly the same, but this is the bottom hinge with kind of wheel on the middle, the adjustable wheel, which is a good thing. You can adjust the hinges if the doors go funny. I'm gonna explain it at the end how to adjust it as well. So bottom hinge coming in and two plugs securing the hinge. We have the four holes there on the outer side, two holes on the inner side, exactly the same as on the top. Bottom hinge, second one coming in and will be secured with two plugs again. At the door, exactly the same, two hinges, the bottom with adjustable wheel, secured with the two plastic plugs. Sometimes they go quite hard, so here I push them in, I don't want them to stick out over the hinge, so we can close and open the doors easily after. So here is adjustable wheel. You see when I'm moving this left and right, the bottom coming in and out. So adjust them before you put the doors in, adjust them exactly the same on all four bottom hinges. So just right on the middle. So the bottom line lining up nicely with the with the hinge. Yeah. So roughly the plus and minus is on the middle on all four hinges. Here the outer hole for the door handle. I have it here on the left. So this is gonna be the inner door, top hinges on the top. And we're gonna go with the second line of the rails at the bottom. Just place the door in. So this is gonna be the left door, it's gonna be the inner door. Find the right place. You're gonna feel it when you're gonna slide the door, it's gonna move left and right very smooth. That's you know you're in the right place. You see, it's moving nicely left and right. We're in the right position at the bottom. We're gonna move to the top and you're gonna slide it to the second line and push the lock up. So we lock the the top hinge in the right place which is the inner rail at the top exactly the same for the second one find the right place and push the lock up so we push the lock into the second rail and the doors are locked sliding nice and smooth all the way so that's gonna be the left door so we have the door handle on the left and this is the right door the door handle is on the right side that's gonna be the outer door and it's gonna be on the right side. And we're gonna do exactly the same only on the outer rail. So the first rail, when you look from the front, find the right place and you're gonna know you're in the right place when the door's gonna move left and right smooth. Here, exactly the same, we're gonna go in the first line of the rail. So the outer rail, lock it in on one hinge, move the doors along and lock it in on the other hinge. Just pushing it up in the first line. Once the door locked, you can check how you're doing with the gap on the edge. You see here, connected completely on the top, but gap at the bottom. And on the other side, huge gap on the top and close at the bottom. So probably the floor is running funny. The first adjustment, if it's quite big gap like this, you can do if your floor is funny. You can use those spacers, which I'm using often. Depend on the carpet or what type of carpet or floor you have. Sometimes just like a millimeter of it is enough to put it and just cut them. Depend how deep you want to go and they are basically invisible. You cannot see them. Kind of happy here on this side. Maybe just slight adjustment on the wheel. Don't want to go crazy on the wheel, especially on the left side because we have huge gap there. So I just try to work out here. So we're still going to have to move slightly up. So I just push the wheel slightly to one side. And now it's connecting nicely all along. Happy with that. So I check the other side. Still quite big gap on the top. So we're gonna have to move this side up to push the doors up. Let's have a look. This is all nice on this side. Better on this side here. All along equal gap. Happy with that. 
Now we have those stoppers and the plugs again, uh, three of the stoppers and six of the plastic plugs. On the top we're gonna place two of these, that's gonna basically stop the wardrobe when you close the doors, it's not gonna kind of bang on the edge, it's gonna stop on the, on the inner doors. Each of these stoppers secured with the two plastic plugs, just like that. And at the bottom there's gonna be one, just place them in, in the bottom two holes like that and secure them with the two plastic plugs. Now we're gonna have door handles, two door handles and two screws with it. Screw coming from the inner side and securing with the door handle. Secure it one and then the other one. Screw in and the door handle from the other side. There it is, sliding nice and smooth, and this is it. That's how we assemble IKEA Hauga wardrobe with the sliding doors. I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. If yes, thumbs up, subscribe to the channel as always. You will made my day, and see you in my next one very, very soon. Thank you for watching. Have a fantastic day.